Okay, got Icom something 30 here. I'm going to show a little tweak here to to uh, align the radio just for the, the frequency it receives on. This particular one's off about 300 hertz. I'll turn off the RIT control here. It's a little bit low. Get the RIT control. Too high. Now that position, if I tune through all of the guys right now in 80 meters, is pretty much about where that has to be. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking at a swarm of different uh, rag chews going on this morning and assuming that pretty much all of them are sort of where they need to be and then I'm splitting the average because that's about what it has to be. So I'm going to turn the red off. That's the frequency offset. And if you go over here, there's a pot over here with the cover off. It's the closest one toward the meter. And that's the frequency adjust. And I'm going to tweak that while they're talking to make it sound correct. The little cover, of course, comes off. It's just got a little little uh, doodad there and it's got here it says uh, here's the different settings here Okay, now I'm going to tweak this in. I'm not listening to what they're talking about, but I'm just going to... I'm going clockwise. That's too high clockwise. I guess I've chosen a area that's not all that active here. So I'm going to go through. He's a little bit low. Let's see if I can find a more active. Still sounds like it's a little bit low. Too high. I'm rotating this. This is Jeremy. So I'm just going to go through the band here. Now you can't assume they're all on frequency, but it's just a lot of them are fairly close. He sounds pretty good.
think he has to think about it for three or four days. Roger. I can't rush quality. So I tweaked it in fairly decent. It was off about 300 hertz. In the book here, what they mention well, there is a little bitty hummingbird. Is they tell you to go through and uh, that thing ain't no longer than the second. What they're telling in the book to do is set this to WWV 10, 10 megahertz, and then you go through and hook it in CW mode, and then you hear you hear the beat of WWV and then you go ahead and short the key out which actually means you're transmitting on WWV and then you tweak this control so that there's no beat that means you're transmitting on 10 megahertz which isn't the best thing to do but uh, you may not be able to uh, pick up WWV or you just may not want to uh, illegally transmit for a few seconds on WWV but I found just this tweaking that one knob here seems to be fairly decent what to do. And I let the radio warm up for a few minutes. The WWB of course would be to go over here on 10. This radio's got the odd quirk when you change bands. It always has got a .5 up here. I don't know why. So you could hit this 100 kilohertz. And in the instructions, what's really weird is it doesn't, it says you to set this at 10 megahertz and you're receiving WWV, then it says to set it to CW. So I'm not really sure if you're supposed to go through on this to set it to WWV when you're in sideband. like this and then turn it to CW because then it's going to go one and a half uh, kilohertz lower on the display. You notice how this works. And that's probably what you're supposed to do. I haven't really messed around with that on the transmit. That would be where you went through and hit transmit in the box. Like that. And then listen the difference between that tone, which is a side tone, and that tone. So you got to wait the delay. You have to set the delay so that you want it when you transmit to receive you're actually going to hear the tones back and forth from their tone from WWV to the other one so that just seems like a kind of a hokey mess to do so that's why I prefer just to go through and go through here and tune through the band Find a QSO. This band must be going to pot. I about lost. These boys must be from the south there. The red, of course, is where you hit this and on the receive. So if you got a guy in a group and he's off, you don't, and you, you know, he may be running a tube amplifier or one that's, or tube unit that tends to drift more, or he's just got a unit off. You hit this button here and you offsets the receive. So you, one guy's off, you can sit there and tweak him in like this. That's only on the receive. But this unit consistently for the last so many years has been to where. 
it, I've had to hit the red here and turn this over on all bands, of course. And that's again, that's a little hidden, hidden, hidden little panel. It also has an adjustment for the loudness of the side tone and CW. It's got a bunch of other little things on here. It's got the marker frequency if there's a marker. Um, the CD monitor on here is how loud the CW side tone is. So when you're transmitting da 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 da, what you hear out of your own speaker. And you've got the narrow and wide, the Vox delay, which means when you transmit, how long is it going to take? Uh, if you're using a Vox, which means you talk into the microphone, how long is it going to take for it to go from transmit to receive? It's got a speech processor on off. And then you can have this set either to read SWR or power on here. So they got some added features that are just kind of hidden behind this little panel. And when you're done, you can sit here and just pop that in. Let me see if I can do that. It's got a little gizmo that goes over center. Ah, you have to pull that out, I guess, so that we'll get narrowed down. So, and this is plastic, so I might have to fiddle with that to get it back in. There you go. So you pull this up on the pin to remove it. The little feature on there. Now, a unit that came after this, the 735, of course, had the clear door with a lot of these little, a lot of these functions under there. This is a decent rig, the 730. It doesn't have any, uh, only trans, only receives on the ham bands. So if you want to listen for broadcast, it, it, if you go to the 10 megahertz band here, you can go through and, um, go a little bit below it goes down to 9.9 .9. here let's go to AM 990 so there are some broadcast bands you can there you go 1 kilohertz 100 kilohertz 10 kilohertz we'll go to 1 kilohertz that's probably Radio China I guess this is on AM over here you can pick it up on sideband by turning this over here of course and That's coming in like gangbusters here. The preamp is on. Noise blanker. This is a split A B. Also, I bumped this, and so the pass band was a little bit off. This is the pass band shift. This is the lock. As always, with 4760, you must be careful to differentiate it from the other AIR station on the same frequency in Black Kashmir. AM, this is where you write, I believe, a memory. AGC, this button here changes the meter from reading ALC or RF output. Noise blanker for like picking up noise, ignition noise. Um, of course, this is AM. Lower sideband, upper upper sideband, lower sideband, CW narrow and CW. And then, unless it has a narrow filter in here, that doesn't do anything. That's an option. This is the mic gain on the inside. 
and then this is the RF power output you can vary so if you put this in have this out and you're transmitting you can adjust the power up to you know 100 watts out on sideband PEP way down I think it goes down to 10 don't quote me on that but I think it goes down to 10 I know on AM it goes from like 10 to 40 on AM and I haven't really measured it on sideband that's volume and this is RF gain so this guy's really strong here so I can turn this down in case let's say he was overloading the front end that airing for us will necessarily be gone so I can turn that down normally I've got this crank way up at 08 to 09 UT on 5850 that's uh, UT Tuesday through Saturday as well this is a power off the, the back of this unit of course has got a lot of this is a heavy joker. Oh. Got the PL259 standard older ICOM power connector and a ground. And then you've got, oh, I'll drop this sucker. It's got ALC for an amplifier. This is a send. And then this is the key for CW. That's external speaker. And then this is the accessory jack, which is an older version. Uh, you can get adapters that, that convert most of the functions out to a newer version. But it's got a square uh, accessory jack that's from the older era. I want to say that's 70s, 80s. If I just had to pull it out of whatever. And that's it. It's a good rig. It's heavy as can be. Uh... When you got something like this vertical, you gotta make sure you don't, you know, goof up putting it uh, on touching there and goof up the connections you got on the back. I've done that on a ICOM 735. It's got a jumper that connects from the uh, little RCA jack, two jacks in the back and a little jumper. And what happens on that is you end up bumping it and then you get no receive because, or it's flaky because you get a solder joint connection. Fail. Now here, just me messing around, I've hit the transmit button, which isn't the greatest. Of course, this is a band switch. Three and a half. It's got the work band, so it's got, you know, 18, 21, 14, 24 and a half, 28, 28 and a half, the standard goes by half a megahertz here on the 10 meter band but they added 24 and a half I believe an 18 back in uh, 79 or something like that but the traditional bands have always been three and a half seven uh, 14 21 and 10 and then I think there's a CW around 10 meters. That may be another work band. It's a good rig. It's heavy. I've actually I've never had a problem with one of these. Uh, I know on the ICOM 735 I've had problems with the encoder uh, being goofy. But I've actually had two of these rigs and never had a, had a problem with it. I think they're fairly bulletproof. Um, but this video is just to show the minor tweak over here for the frequency offset of course you should always do that when it's warmed up a little bit it probably doesn't make that much difference but uh, I've only done that a couple times since I've owned this unit and that's about it